Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how controller behavior is changing with .NET 7, especially around controller actions and dependency injection. It looks like it's an effort to align that behavior with minimal APIs and I should note that I'm recording this in .NET 7 Preview 2, so things might change in other areas but this looks pretty robust so I thought I'd show you. If you like the of content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe or ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. And before I move on, I just want to take a step back and thank you so, so much for 100,000 subscribers. It is just an insane, like, mind-blowing milestone that I would never think I would ever reach, especially three years ago when I started this channel. So thank you so much for tapping that subscribe button. Tap it if you haven't already. And to celebrate this, I want to offer the first 200 of you a 20% discount code to everything on my website. So you can go on nickchops.com, use code 100K, and you can get a 20% discount even on the bundles which are already discounted. So if you were waiting for a discount to jump in, now it's the time. Again, thank you so much. I couldn't have done it without you. And now let's go straight to the code. So what is changing, right? Well, let me show you how web APIs are working in .NET 6. And just to prove you that this is in .NET 6, as you can see, .NET 6 here. Now I have a web API. It has a controller. It is the weather forecast controller, a bit changed. But really the only thing I've done is I moved the weather forecast calculation from the controller to a separate service, and then I'm injecting that service. And I'm doing that because what's changing is around dependency injection. Now, obviously everyone should know that you can inject services through the constructor and as long as they are registered in dependency injection, they will be resolved. So for example, if I run this web API and I go ahead and open postman to call that endpoint right here and I call it, as you can see, I'm getting the weather back. Pretty straightforward, exactly what you'd expect. Now, there's actually a second way to inject a service in web API controller and this is actually directly on the action because you might not want to inject something on the constructor level that isn't used by every action in your controller. And the solution to that is you move it to the action level, exactly as you see in your screen right now, and then you slap a from services attribute to that. And if you do that, then what happens is if I go ahead and I run this API, the system will just run. And as you can see, I'm getting the service. It is resolved from the dependency injection container. Now, let's take a step back from Web API and go to Minimal APIs. Now, Minimal APIs, the same service would look something like this. So you have the HTTP GET, the weather endpoint, and then you have the service injected, but there is no from services attribute. And the reason for that is because in minimal APIs on startup, the application is actually scanning those endpoints and it says, oh, you're trying to inject a weather service. Well, I actually have a weather service in my DI container. So I will assume that this weather service is coming from that. Now, if it's not there, it's going to assume that it's coming from the body. But if it's a GET request, then it doesn't really know where things are coming and will throw an error on runtime. But if I go ahead and I run this exactly as it is right now, again, .NET 6 stuff, um, and I call that endpoint, it's the same URL, as you can see, I'm getting a response. So it all works fine. And I could, by the way, add here the from services attribute. It still works, but it's not needed. It's redundant. So if I delete it and I go back to the controller, if I now try to have the same experience and remove that from services attribute and say, oh, the thing will actually just try to infer it, right? I don't need it. It will think on startup that I don't have this, so it's probably a service. Uh, but if I go ahead and I call that endpoint, as you can see, this is returning a 415 unsupported media type. This is happening because it doesn't really know where this item is coming from and it's assuming it's coming somewhere from queries, routes, it doesn't really know. So it returns that uh, 415. So controller actions need you to be explicit. They need you to specify that, hey, this is coming from services. Do not look in the body, the route, the anywhere else. Now with .NET 7, which I'm going to go ahead and edit now, when I'm going to just slap that over here um, and close that. Now, this is still valid code. However, I do not need that from services. Behavior is now aligned with the minimal APIs approach. And if I go ahead and I run this, I will no longer get this 415. Instead, it all works. And you just implicitly opt into this behavior. Now, what does that mean for your applications? Because think about it. This is, I think, kind of a breaking change because now I just updated my code and previously it would throw a 415, but you basically 
implicitly opt into a behavior that is different than the previous version without the code changing. And I believe in some cases this might be a breaking change because previously you were getting a 415 and sure, realistically, your code would not really be functional if you had it that way, but it's still there and the behavior is different. So could it? Maybe you can think of a way that this can break your application, this implicit opt into the feature. Now, if you do not want this to be an implicit thing, you can explicitly disable it. So I can go to program.cs and I can say builder.services.configure and I can configure the API behavior options object. And I can say in this Lambda options.disable implicit from services parameter. And I can say true. And that way I can disable that implicit from services parameter thing. Uh, and now if I go ahead and I run this again with this option set to true, well, as you can see, I'm getting the same behavior as before. So you can disable it. So it is interesting that this is now the default behavior. And I see why they do that because they want you to not have to use that from service attribute. But it is a bit weird that you just implicitly opt into that because if you upgrade your application, potentially it could lead to issues. I haven't found a concrete example from an actual application that I own to show that because if I had that case, it would probably be a bug. It shouldn't be happening. And maybe that's the ground they step on to implement that feature in the way they did. And that's perfectly fine, but you should know about this. And that's why I'm making this video. I think in general, I like this change because it aligns it to the different layers of how to build an API in .NET, you know, minimal APIs, web API, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Do you think that this is something that should happen? Should those two things be aligned? And do you think that this change is good? Is this implicit service injection here obvious enough? Or like if I upgrade a .NET 6 project to .NET 7 and I remove those from services, will it confuse people? Because I can also have here like a days attribute, which is coming from the query string and then it is a bit weird that everything is implicit and you have to basically think, oh, this is coming from there. Oh, this is coming from there. And even though we know that this is how minimal APIs work, controllers have been in a different way for a long time. So this could look weird. Like I would expect objects like this to come from the body. Obviously, get doesn't have a body, but these are all the things that come to mind. And I want to raise that to see what you think. So please let me know down below. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you can find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more. You can like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.